Let's have a conversation. The implications of ADHD... The implications of ADHD are quite intense and cause our lives to be quite different from most people. There are many different reasons why people have for not wanting to get a diagnosis, for not wanting to accept a diagnosis. And this can be from the individual, from the self. This can be because of family members, perhaps shaming from a culture, or a, f a feeling of shame from society, perhaps. There's a bunch of different reasons why. And I wanted to talk about some of them with you. So, so, let's have a conversation. Let's have an intuitive conversation. Again, why different people have difficulty with an ADHD diagnosis. Number one, the stigma society has on mental health issues, conditions, and disorders. When it comes to ADHD, society, at least here in the US, there's only a small grasp of what ADHD really is. Thankfully, these days, we're seeing much more information and research get out there. If you go on social media, there's a lot of different groups and people out there doing some wonderful and lovely things to bring light to the notions and difficulties that come with ADHD. But the average person still doesn't really know what comes with ADHD. So sometimes because of that, some negative implications can come with the label for some people of having ADHD. They feel that there might be something wrong with their son or daughter if they get a diagnosis that their child might be looked upon differently. Their child might be looked upon differently. They might be looked upon differently as a parent. Or if the parent themselves is getting help for their ADHD, they might be looked upon differently. And this is very hard for some people. Some people have a difficult time not fitting in, being different. They just want to blend into the crowd. And there's other people who don't have an issue with standing out. And this varies. This depends on the person. But for some people, the label of a condition, disorder, whatever you want to call it, the label of that is a little too much to handle for some people. And because of that very reason, they choose to do nothing. Choosing to do nothing is not gonna make the ADHD go away. It's not gonna make the symptoms go away. Of either you, or your child, your adolescent. ADHD is a lifelong condition for many of us. ADHD is a lifelong condition for many of us, and there are many different reasons why people have ADHD. And I have multiple videos that talk about that, if you ever want to check them out. One, particularly, entitled, Why You Might Have ADHD. The link should be above. But going back to what we were saying, it's very tough for some people to accept the notion that there might be something different about them. And the implications that brings forth, whether it's in the business field, whether it's in school, or whether it's around the city, society, what have you, things of that nature. The negative implication of ADHD is starting to lessen. We're starting to see much more acceptance of many different avenues in life, and also in mental health. So, if you feel you don't want to get ADHD because there might be a negative implication or a negative stigma that comes with it, pick your head up and understand that it's okay to ask for help. We're all really different. As human beings, we have our uniqueness about us. We have our special abilities. And we have the stuff we're not so good at either. And that's totally fine. But when it comes to ADHD, choosing not to help yourself out, you're selling yourself short. There's so many resources out there you can do to help yourself out. And not choosing not to do something just because of negative stigma that comes with it. You're really not doing yourself 
or your family members any favors. Be brave, put your head up, go get evaluated. A diagnosis is not the end of the world. You'd be surprised. You learn much more about ADHD. You're going to see how much of a struggle not just you, but so many other people have and what we can do in order to improve them. Don't let society or the media and the negative stigma that comes with that cause you not to get the help you deserve, to live the life that you deserve to live. Getting help for ADHD is going to improve your life quality and it's not going to be easy. You're going to have to place effort and you're going to have to do follow-up. The follow-up is pretty hard when you have ADHD, but it takes time. I was able to change my life. I've been able to help a few people change their life too. And I'm sure a lot of you listening can change your lives as well if you put in the time and you put in the effort. Don't let the negative stigma and view of ADHD ever bring you down to the point where you don't want to get yourself help. Because if you have ADHD, I'm certain for a lot of you that life hasn't been easy. We deserve the help. Go get yourself some help. Point number two. The negative stigma and implications that come from the individual's culture. Shaming. A lot of the time, there are some cultures that can be a bit intense and a bit judgmental towards things that they don't know and that they don't understand or that are foreign to them. And in some cultures, there's a lot of shaming that goes on when someone doesn't honor a certain practice or does something that is considered an offense or things of that nature. So in a lot of different cultures, Research is starting to show that ADHD is very prominent, except that within the culture, accepting psychology, psychiatry, sometimes is a little difficult. There's a negative stigma that sometimes comes with mental health in some cultures. We have to realize that as human beings, sometimes different cultures are at different parts in history. Regardless of the fact that we're all living in the current time, certain viewpoints and mindsets are not up to date, so to speak, in certain areas. There are some cultures that really stick to certain traditions that come from times of the past and for different reasons. And we have to understand that some traditions are needed in order to help certain things thrive. But with time comes refinement. And we have to choose as an individual, because we have the free will to do what we see fit for ourselves and for our families, We see what works and we see what doesn't work. Tradition is a beautiful thing. We have to know how to refine it though to our current lifestyle and what we're doing, especially when it comes to ADHD and this implication that I'm talking about. Regardless of the shaming that might come from certain people, that's not gonna make the ADHD go away. That's going to make you probably not want to talk about the ADHD. But it doesn't make the ADHD go away. The biggest thing you can do as a family member for someone that has ADHD is support them, encourage them. Whether it's in school, in work, or in their life, or, you know, something you think that they need. And encourage them to get help for their condition as well. There are many other conditions and things of that nature that have help out there. Just because a certain culture or society doesn't might not look upon ADHD or certain conditions with positive implications doesn't mean that you don't deserve to get the help. And I've worked with multiple people from, from certain cultures that have difficulty accepting the notions of ADHD. ADHD is real. The further the study shows the issues with the prefrontal cortex the imbalances in neurochemistry, the different gene mutations. There's a lot that's going on in the brain that people with ADHD similarly have problems with. And having ADHD does not make you any less of a person. One has to understand that. 
if you come from a culture where things are shamed just because they're different, I urge you to open your mind up little by little. Life becomes a lot more interesting, a lot more intricate, and a lot more profound the more you open your mind to certain things. I grew up around a lot of closed-minded people, so for me, it was very invigorating to open up my mind. In my adolescence and in my 20s and my studies, I was able to see how much of the human element through time, how much similarity we have with a lot of our past ancestors. And I saw the importance of what different implications of different traditions being passed down brought. But what I also saw was the refinement of some of these traditions. So we have to refine ourselves and we have to know that in the time that we're living in, we have access to a lot of stuff. We have access to a lot of help with ADHD. It shouldn't have to be a bad thing for you to go get help and get the diagnosis of ADHD. So what can be done is you, perhaps, and your significant other, your spouse. You can take your son, your daughter, yourselves, whoever one of the family has ADHD and wants, wants to see if they have a diagnosis. You should feel the liberty and freedom to be able to go without the shame that comes from a culture. And I know that's easier said than done for some people. But empower yourself. Understand that helping out your condition is of more importance than what anyone else is going to tell you. This is your life, not the lives of the other people. Especially not the lives of those who are going to be shaming you. They're not the ones who focus here. You are, and your family is. Pick your head up. Don't feel ashamed that you or somebody you know might have ADHD. If someone you know thinks that they have ADHD and feels bad because of it, and if someone you know has ADHD and you think they feel bad because they're going to be shamed for it, Talk to them and help them out. Encourage them. Having ADHD is not something to be shamed for. Having the knowledge that ADHD exists and that you're doing nothing about it, on the other hand, should be something you should be ashamed about if you choose to do nothing in the long run because you're only hurting yourself and those you care for. Something to think about. And that's a pretty deep subject matter, but the help is there. The knowledge is out there. It's up to you to choose a time that's going to work for you. Give that some thought. <laughs> Number three. The parent or parents refuse to accept the idea of diagnosis due to not being mentally slash emotionally ready to accept the idea that one of their offspring has ADHD. Avoidance. Avoidance. There are some parents that I've seen, I have colleagues who've worked with them and some parents I've worked with that flat out refuse to accept that ADHD might be something in the picture. Now this might be for various reasons, going back to the earlier reasons I was talking about, about the negative stigma society might bring, the negative stigma that a person's culture might bring. It's like an automatic label that there's something defective about somebody. And these notions make it really hard for a parent to accept. And it can be, as I mentioned in the point, because they're not mentally or emotionally ready to accept the notion or to even think about the implications of what this might bring. So they just flat out refuse and say that it doesn't exist. So and so doesn't have it. And yeah, just sheer avoidance. Now I think that's really unfair for a parent on their part 
to not do anything in the long run. I understand if a parent is hesitant and wants to think about it, because it's a really strong implication to accept the notion that ADHD might be involved in their son or, or their daughter. So it takes some time for some people, but I'm speaking to the t to the parents that are choosing in the long run to do nothing, or it's been a while and they just keep choosing to do nothing. Get yourself emotionally and mentally balanced out and give some notion and some credibility to the idea that ADHD might be involved and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. That's not going to make you, your family, your son or your daughter or anybody else who has ADHD any less of a person. With ADHD, we also have a lot of skill sets and a lot of abilities that other people don't. It's learning how to build upon your strengths and refine your weaknesses where you can find the most inner strength in yourself. And you can empower yourself. Running away from an idea or just shutting it out of your mind. You're just brushing the stuff underneath the carpet at that point. The ADHD doesn't go away. And the problems that you or your family are going to have are not going to go away either. A lot of these things can be prevented. It's just coming to the notion. That first step is really hard. Okay, ADHD might, might be an implication. Sometimes a lot of us come from environments, cultures, and lifestyles where if there's one defect that we have, we're shamed and insulted and called horrible things or perhaps even treated differently. But we're living in a much more open and accepting time and not to mention that research information is out there. We can use our smartphones to take the information out right away. And there's much more research and evidence of ADHD and how it works and we understand so much more of it than we used to just 15 years ago. So, you'd be surprised. There's so many other parents out there and families that have ADHD too that connect through different social media and different different networks online. Take Health Unlocked, take Instagram. There's a huge ADHD communities on there. Some very, very cool, very empowering, wonderful people that are trying to bring the notions of ADHD to a bigger scale so people can understand and we can refine our school system and the business lifestyle to better accommodate for people who have ADHD because a big part of society has ADHD. They just don't know it as the research is starting to show. So it's okay. We need to work on not thinking that ADHD or diagnosis of ADHD is going to mark the end of an individual. It doesn't work like that. When you find out, or if you find out you have ADHD, that's empowerment. You have learned what your strengths and what a lot of your weaknesses are. Because there are different subtypes of ADHD. We gotta look into them, we gotta see what they bring forth. I have videos that talk about that, and there are plenty of other videos here on YouTube that speak of the same notions. So the knowledge is out there, much more people are accepting. There's communities where you as parents can speak to other people or you as individuals can speak to other people with ADHD that go through a lot of the same struggles. It's a community, it's a supportive effort. You don't have to feel ashamed. You don't have to run from the idea. Knowing you have ADHD and taking care of it, that's empowerment and that's knowledge. Knowledge that you can use to improve yourself. Number four, the ADHD itself makes it difficult to take further steps towards diagnosis and treatment. Having ADHD is gonna bring forth difficulty with a lot of follow-up, especially when it comes to doing long-term things where we need to do multiple steps in order to get something done and when something, some, something perhaps cannot be immediate. So with this notion, we understand that with ADHD, it's really difficult for us to do follow-up 
to perform follow-ups and activities of what we're doing or goals or things that we need to accomplish or complete. It's really hard to do that with ADHD because we have difficulty with a neurotransmitter by the name of do dopamine. So we have difficulty with concentration and with motivation. So getting an ADHD diagnosis takes multiple steps. We have to go get an evaluation or rather we have to get a referral from our doctor most of the time here in the US and then from the referral from the doctor we get referred to a psychiatrist. The psychiatrist does some evaluations and in some places you're going to have to meet with a psychologist first but yeah you meet with a psychiatrist and they run the questions to see if you have ADHD or not. They find out what subtype you have and then you either get a diagnosis of ADHD or you don't, and then you can start seeking different treatment options. And there are some places now starting to pop up, some ADHD centers, where they have ADHD-specific counseling, and they have ADHD-specific psychologists, psychiatrists that can help you out and can do the whole ordeal sometimes in a faster manner. So that might be of interest to you. See if there's an ADHD center around your area where you can go get the evaluation and get the treatment in the same place. And they take care of it and they make it much more beneficial for somebody who has ADHD because they know the struggle that comes with it. So if you have ADHD and you just haven't gotten the motivation and concentration to kind of get going and get your diagnosis to find out, plan it out. If you keep letting it slide, it's just going to keep sliding and you're never going to do it. Time is just going to keep on going. You have to set aside a day and time to do it. Give yourself some sort of reward or some sort of encouragement to start doing it. Give yourself the reward after you complete it and do something to help motivate yourself. I mean, it's not an easy thing when you have ADHD, but this is your life in the long run. It's going to be of much benefit to you if you get the help that you need. So, give it a go. Point number five, the individual not believing in themselves. Apathy. So, a lot of individuals who have ADHD, they have difficulty believing in themselves. Because they've had a lot of difficulty in their life and there's been a lot of things that they perhaps haven't done so good in. When you have ADHD, you're going to have difficulty with so many areas of focus and concentration and motivation that in school, you're probably not going to perform all that well and there's probably going to be a lot of apathy. And I know there's a lot of people with ADHD who perform well in school, but there's a lot of us who don't as well. So with ADHD comes a lot of failure. And with that failure, a lot of the time, we get negative mindsets and we frame our mind and we kind of give up and we feel hopeless, like we're not going to be able to complete goals. Whatever plans that we do, we're just not going to be able to do them. So we kind of tell ourselves, what's the point? What's the point of getting a diagnosis if I'm just going to go and I'm not going to be able to do anything and it's not going to help me out? I'm still going to be the same person, you know, that I am. And that notion isn't true. For those of you who haven't gotten treatment, you don't know any other life but the life that you lived, which is a life not treated, i.e. your ADHD is not treated. You lived a life where you've had to develop different mechanisms and habits and being slick you know, and putting stuff off to the last minute and getting yourself into some intense situations because of the ADHD and not getting the help. So, to those people who feel apathetic and feel like getting treatment isn't going to do anything, it is. Believe you me. When you find a treatment that works for you, whether that's medication, whether that's supplements, whether that's working out, eating healthier, all those things. You can do all of those things and they can all make a big difference. It takes effort finding a treatment that works for you finding a type of medication perhaps that works for you is really going to help you out and it's going to help you succeed and a lot of us due to having adhd we have a lot of bad and negative habits that we do because we got used to doing them when we weren't treated for the adhd so we're going to have to relearn a lot of behavior and 
Some of us thankfully can do that on our own and some of us need a little extra help and that's totally fine. A lot of places, especially these ADHD centers or these counseling places, a lot of these places, whether it be ADHD centers or whether it be uh, places where they do counseling and therapy, they work with individuals who have ADHD and are starting to seek treatment and also need perhaps therapy to help improve their behavior. Because like I said before, if you have ADHD, there's a lot of negative behavior that we've learned or rather adaptive behavior to help us out. And sometimes that can be really chaotic and bring upon a lot of stress. So there's certain things that we have to relearn and some of us need help in the therapeutic aspect of that in terms of behavior and by all means. It's okay to ask for help. It's okay to feel good. The being okay to ask for help part is something that's so difficult for so many people with ADHD. Because a lot of the time we we have felt betrayed or maybe taken advantage of or felt like someone didn't care when we asked for help. And the rejection sensitive dysphoria, the RSD that comes with ADHD, that can make it really hard for us to want to ask for help again. But if you get the treatment that you need, believe you me, especially when it comes to the medication or when it comes to helping out your behavior, you are going to see a big difference in your life if you apply yourself and if you keep going. Don't believe the apathy. Believe in yourself. Number six. The parents themselves have ADHD and experience RSD and or have difficulty taking further steps towards diagnosis. So, as I mentioned earlier, rejection sensitive dysphoria, RSD, is a very negative feeling described as dysphoria, not euphoria, dysphoria, where when you feel like you have let somebody down or they have let you down or you feel betrayed, it's this really intense negative feeling that lingers and stays with you for a long time. And it's almost like your body feels threatened, almost. Because our central nervous system is heightened. If you have ADHD, research has shown. So, it's easy to get the system startled or stressed out or even scared. So, the RSD makes us feel rejection so much more stronger. So... Some parents perhaps don't want to deal with that because they themselves have rejection-sensitive dysphoria and they might feel like they have let down their son or their daughter or their family because they couldn't catch the ADHD themselves. They didn't do anything about it. They didn't take anyone to go at least get an evaluation. That's totally fine. Many years ago, in the 90s, I remember growing up, there was very little knowledge of ADHD. There was knowledge out there about it, but it was nowhere near what it is today. And same thing in the 2000s. Now, I think out of any time in history, we have the most information about ADHD out and about. And that's a great thing. So we shouldn't have to feel resentment if we, we as parents didn't catch the ADHD either in ourselves or in our son or in our daughter. Having ADHD, especially certain types of ADHD, it's a bit harder to catch. I myself have inattentive ADHD and teachers couldn't tell I had it. They just thought I was daydreaming all the time. They would get really upset with me. But the notions and implications of ADHD, it shouldn't be a matter of shame. It shouldn't be a matter of feeling dishonored or anything like that. A lot of us are born with ADHD. And if you as a parent feel rejection sensitive dysphoria yourself, or you feel RSD perhaps because of your own ADHD, understand that it's okay. You have to feel okay with yourself and be okay with yourself before you expect other people to be okay and accepting of you. One has to feel the confidence, one has to feel 
empowered through the self. And believe me, that, that can be contagious to other people. Other people will feel that. They'll be like, wow, this person's owning it. You know, they have ADHD. They're taking care of it. They're improving their life. Hey, you know what? I might have something too. Let me empower myself. Be an example. There are so many families that are suffering because of ADHD. And the different problems, the many problems that it brings to families. Just because of having perhaps shame. Or because they don't want their un their unknown RSD to be triggered. And for them to feel harsh, for them to feel a sense of guilt or a sense of I don't want to do this now because whatever whatever reason, we shouldn't have to feel like that. We're living in a much more accepting time. And we're living in a time with a lot of information out there too. There's a lot of communities and access to other ADHD communities where you can talk and you can see that so many other families have the same struggle and it's so it's so invigorating for some people to see and connect with other families who have the same issues due to ADHD the same problems things of that nature it's so refreshing to see other people who have the same difficulty because of the same condition and the same implications because at that point we can help each other out. We have to be understanding and accepting of the ADHD first though, before we go and expect other people to be okay with it. Empower yourself and lift your, lift your head up. ADHD is not something to be ashamed about and neither is rejection sensitive dysphoria. With the knowledge of those two things, you can really learn a lot more about yourself and improve yourself. I know I have, and I'm continuing to work on that, and you can too. Last point, number seven. Some people were diagnosed young and had a bad experience with medication and treatment that did not work out well for them. This is something else I commonly hear that an individual was diagnosed maybe 30, 40, or 20 years ago when they were young or in elementary school, high school or middle school, things of that nature. And the treatment that they got didn't work out good for them. They perhaps got a medication that made them feel a lot of negative symptoms and they just stopped taking it. Or they perhaps developed some really negative habits because of the medication. So for those people, I would say, if you're not having any treatment now, just because of that bad experience from years prior, I would ask you to reevaluate that thought. If you have substance abuse issues, I'm understanding of that. There are some people with ADHD who have substance abuse issues and were not able to tolerate the medication. It's a different story in that regard. You perhaps want to take maybe a different approach or work with a therapist or counselor that can help you out with them. But for other people who just had a bad experience with the medication where there was no addiction or things of that nature involved there are different types of ADHD medications there's a large variety now and people think that only stimulants are available for ADHD medication no there's a lot of other new treatments and treatment options that are out there of all different sorts of varieties and things of that nature also, you can include supplements with your medication treatment. For myself, I take ADHD, I take stimulant medication, very low dosage, and I take that with supplements as well to help fight off the negative side effects and to help with the neurotransmitters that I've researched people with ADHD have difficulty with. I've been doing this since my mid-twenties. I certainly know for me, when I started taking treatment, for my ADHD and I started including supplements to help out with the neurotransmitters of difficulty and to help fight off the side effects of the medication and fight off oxidation as well, I was able to tremendously turn my life around and was able to go back to my university and complete my studies. And I know so many people with ADHD are very intelligent and have the potential to succeed. So many grand entrepreneurs in the ADHD community 
they have the drive and motivation, but a lot of the time, the condition isn't taken care of, and that makes it all the more difficult. So, if you are somebody who perhaps got diagnosed when you were young, understand that perhaps the treatment that you were taking back then didn't work out all that well for you because you perhaps weren't taking supplements or vitamins or anything that can would help you counteract the negative side effects that come with some stomach medications or perhaps the medication you were taking was not the best for you or the dosage might have been too low or too high there are many different things we have to consider when taking ADHD medication I have a video that talks all about that if you would like to check it out the link should be above so understand that stuff has improved more knowledge is out there and you can do so much to help yourself out now. There's so many great and wonderful companies that make supplements and great supplements that are of great quality that can help you out with some of these neurotransmitters that we have difficulty with. I feel so much more content, empowered, and alive. I do now that I'm getting my ADHD taken care of than I did in the past when I wasn't taking treatment. So something perhaps to reflect upon. It's up to us. Other people can want us to help ourselves out as much as they want, but if we as a person, if we as an individual do not want treatment or don't want to do anything about it, then nothing's going to be done. We have to want it. And we have to be the one to pick ourselves up to go do something about it. There are many websites out there where different people talk about these things that I mentioned in this video. And talk about a lot of other things too that might be a reason for you having difficulty with the ADHD diagnosis. But we can do it. We can empower ourselves. I'm somebody who had, or has rather, I'm somebody who has inattentive ADHD. I struggled so much growing up in so many different areas. I was really apathetic and I thought I couldn't do anything about it. Once I found out I had inattentive ADHD, I researched it for a few months and then I went and got treatment. I researched supplements and I continued researching still to this day. And I published a book a few years back specifically about inattentive ADHD and my life struggles and what you can do to help out inattentive ADHD in the different stages of life. I want to work specifically with the ADHD community. My family and I have been working with people that have ADHD for many years and it's something I want to help out with as well. As someone who has ADHD and works in mental health, I really want to help empower and improve people with the condition. It's one thing to be a therapist or counselor that knows about ADHD and gives counseling. It's a really different notion for someone who is given counseling and therapy who has ADHD. That's a deeper knowledge. And I want to bring forth, along with so many other people, I'm starting to see other counselors and therapists that have ADHD. They're helping other people with ADHD out as well. That's what I'm talking about. I love that. And I want to see more of that. We can get treatment. And that's totally fine. But most importantly, we have access to treatment that works for us. It's just a trial and error process sometimes. And the follow up with ADHD makes that really hard. But... If we want the right help, it's going to take the right amount of effort. I believe each and every one of you listening can do that. Let's knock it out of the park. That's all I got to say for today, folks. This is Wilhelm, your ADHD comrade. Over and out.